What's up everybody? Today we're going to look at uh, what are referred to as YouTube. So YouTube is essentially a tube that's shaped like a U. So imagine like this glass tube shaped like a U. We're going to pour some water into it. Hopefully it makes sense to you that they're going to reach, the water is going to reach the same level. Uh, conceptually, it should make sense to you about what we've been talking about. If this has a certain height h, this has the same height h, right? Which means there's going to be a pressure down here. Actually, let's use red. It's going to be a little pressure down here, right? And the same pressure here. So there's going to be equal pressure here. In fact, everywhere down here at the bottom, it's going to be equal pressure. So when we have equal pressures, we're in a nice equilibrium situation. Now, let's imagine that we put some liquid, let's pour some random liquid into here, and we're gonna put that on top, right? So we're gonna fill up some liquid up here. Well, this would not just remain stationary, right? It wouldn't end up looking like exactly like I have here because we've added an additional height here of liquid, and the overall height is gonna be greater, which means this pressure down at the bottom here is going to increase compared to this. So this would have, say, a high pressure. This would, say, have a low pressure. So if this pressure is higher, it's going to push this way, right? Which means this water level is actually going to rise just a touch, okay? Actually, it depends how much we put in here. The more we put in here, the more this should go up, right? The more this level over on this side is going to start to rise up. So eventually, though, it's going to reach some equilibrium point again. So let me, uh, let's go ahead and redraw this. Okay, let's draw this out. The area, the kind of the width of these is supposed to be the same, so bear with me here. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and draw the level. So this level over on the left side should go up a little bit, right? And this, I didn't draw this, but hopefully it makes sense to you that this, the water level at least is gonna come down here, right? So let's draw the new water level. Here's the original across. So this level should go up. So let's draw it up to, let's say right here. Okay. And then this should drop down like this. Okay. And then we're gonna place some of this random red liquid on top. Let's say we put this amount like this. Actually, this is a good conceptual question. Think about this, all right, and then we'll calculate it as we do it. Um, based on my drawing that I have here, actually, sorry, this red should go down lower, right? So we're going to draw this red down to this level, okay? And then the rest is going to just be water inside. Let me just fill that in. Boom. So here's my conceptual question for you to think about. Based on this drawing, is this red liquid have a higher density or a lower density than the water? Okay, so we're going to calculate that out. Make your prediction on your own. We're going to calculate it out and see what it is, and, and then we'll talk about it. So down here at the bottom, these pressures should be equal when we're in equilibrium, right? And recall, the way that we calculate pressure is we say pressure is equal to the pressure on top plus rho gh, where h is the depth of the liquid. So in that case, this would be the depth from here to here. And this would be the depth from here to here. Okay? Well, one thing you should notice, hopefully, is this region right here, from here to here, and this region right here, from here to here, is the same depth, right? Which means that the pressure at all these points is the same all the way across here. So really what we have to do is say the pressure here and the pressure here should be equal. To find equilibrium, we really have to just look at the heights from here to here. Let's call that H1, and the height from here to here, let's call that H2. So we're going to say this pressure and this pressure are exactly equal to each other. 
okay? So let's go ahead and set that one up. On the left side, um, this is an at one atmosphere. This would be our P initial, this would be a P initial. In this case, they are equal to each other. So on the left side, we're gonna have P initial, which is just the atmosphere. We'll write PATM plus rho GH. Now this is for water here. So we'll write water, and then this is, we call this H1. So this should balance out with the right side, which again is gonna be P of the atmosphere plus rho, and this is the unknown, G, and then H2. Okay, so notice that our atmospheric pressure is gonna cancel, which should make sense. Notice also that little G is gonna cancel as well. So what we're left with then is just rho of water, H1 should equal rho of the unknown, H2. Now I didn't give you any numbers here, so let's just go plug in some random numbers. Let's say H2 was 20 centimeters, sorry, that's too big, millimeters, 20 millimeters. And let's say H1 here is, I don't know, how about 14? Okay, so we'll plug in the numbers. We're solving for the density of the unknown. So let's see if we can fit it right here. Density of the unknown should equal uh, density of the water times H1 over H2. Plug in your numbers here and you get 700, and again the units here would be kilogram per meter cubed. So if we flash back to that original question, conceptual question, how does the density of the red compare to the um, water? Well, you can imagine here, since this density is lower, we want the overall pressure to be the same. We must have a greater volume in here. There must be a larger volume in order to produce the same exact net force acting against the water. So I do want you to think about what would this look like if the density of red, say, was larger than water. So maybe on your paper, go ahead and sketch out what you think that will look like, and we will um, discuss in class. See you then.